Welcome to the Biotechnology Program and your first day of lab classes. I'm Christina Williams and I'm the Laboratory Manager here at the BIT Program. It's my responsibility to go over safety protocols to make sure everyone's on the same page about how to handle our biological and chemical agents in a safe manner. You have been given an informed consent sheet that outlines the specific biological and chemical agents that you will be working with, how to handle them, and what to do in case of infection or contamination. Here in BIT, we have four lab spaces which are each rated up to a biosafety level 2. That rating comes with specific requirements for personal protective equipment, lab features, and decontamination. Personal protective equipment is the first defense against anything you may come into contact with while in the laboratory. In our labs, you're required to wear safety glasses, gloves, lab coats, closed-toed shoes, and long pants. Safety glasses protect your eyes against splashes. They also keep you from accidentally rubbing your eyes with unwashed or gloved hands. Safety glasses should be worn at all times while in the laboratory. Wear glasses? Try a wave pair. It's important to make sure that you find glasses that work for you. If you can't, come find me and we can work together to find a pair that fit. There are gloves in every lab in at least two places. Make sure to wear gloves whenever you are touching your experiment or equipment in the lab, but remember to take them off and wash your hands before leaving the room. If your gloves are contaminated or torn, dispose of them right away in the biohazard bins and get a new pair. Do not try to wash them. Gloves are not as expensive as your safety. Lab coats are worn during all activities in the lab. We use disposable lab coats which are replaced every eight weeks of class. They come in a wide range of sizes. Try to find a size that fits for you. Do not wear gloves or lab coats in common areas like the kitchen or bathroom. The one exception is going in between the labs or getting ice for ice baths. Lab coats are stored in designated drawers at your assigned stations. At the end of each lab, take off your lab coat and store it in your drawer so that it's there for you to use in the next class. If your lab coat is torn or contaminated, make sure to dispose of it and get a clean one to use the next class. It is absolutely essential to wear proper shoes in the lab. This means shoes that cover the front and back of your foot. Sneakers are ideal. If you do not wear the right shoes to lab, you will be asked to leave. If you have long hair or if you have dangling jewelry or loose clothing, please make sure to tie them back out of the way. This is for your protection as well as your experiment's protection. You do not want to contaminate your experiment or accidentally take your work home with you. There is no food, gum, candy, or drinks in the lab, including water. This also includes snacks that you may have stored in your book bags. Don't let them come through the doorway. We have carts outside the labs where you may store your food during the lab period, or down the hall there's a kitchen area. You are welcome to store your food in the refrigerator or on the shelves in the kitchen. Cell phones and other personal items are the most common vectors for contamination. We encourage you to use your cell phones to take pictures of your experiments for documentations in your lab reports. But if you're going to handle a personal item, please take off your gloves and wash your hands. That way you eliminate the possibility of accidentally transferring some sort of contaminant to your cell phone, which you may later transfer to yourself when you go to use your cell phone. You also want to avoid touching your face. That also includes not messing with your contacts or biting your fingernails. Please make sure to store your bags either in the provided cubbies or in the kickouts underneath your bench tops. This ensures that no one trips over a loose backpack strap. We don't want anyone ending up on the floor. Take a look around you and make sure you know where all the safety items are in the lab. Make note of where the eye wash, safety showers, hand washing sinks, emergency exits, and fire extinguishers are. Every lab is equipped with an eye wash and a safety shower. The eye wash is in case you have anything that might splash into your eye, and in the case of the shower, on your body. They are tested weekly to ensure that they run properly and that there is nothing caught up in the water lines. The showers are for large spills on the person, and the eye washes are to rinse out small spills or particulates in your eyes. Please note though that there are no drains around these, so they are for emergency use only. We try to minimize the use of sharps in the classroom, but you may still come across some broken glass or plastic. 
If you do have a Sharp, your TA will help you dispose of it in the red biohazard containers that say Sharps. Do not throw away Sharp objects in the normal trash cans. If there is a spill, please notify your TA, myself, or one of your instructors so that we can help you clean it up properly. If it's just a small spill, you can clean that up with some paper towels and disinfectant, but still let your TA or instructor know so that we can make sure everything is cleaned up properly. All contaminated materials, including anything biological, should be disposed of in a biohazard waste container. Every lab has a large red biohazard waste container for larger materials. This includes things like auger plates. On every bench shop is a smaller orange biohazard container. This can be used to dispose of small objects like your pipette tips, microcentrifuge tubes, or chem wipes. You can use this during your lab and at the end of lab you can close the lid and leave it there as long as your bag is less than half full. If your bag is more than half full, please take the inner plastic bag out, throw it in the red biohazard container, and replace it with a clean bag that your TA will help you find. You're expected to use the provided pens for marking and taking notes. These are recognizable as they have the same tie-dye color scheme as the instructor and TA lab coats. If you are wearing gloves and touching your experiment, only use these pens. Writing utensils are a personal item just like your cell phone, and pens are also a common vector for contamination. So while you're in the lab, use the provided pens and please leave them here at the end of the day. Labeling may seem like an odd topic for a safety presentation, but over the course of your semester, you'll be creating samples that you don't want to lose. Be mindful that we have up to six sections of one lab running at any time. So if you do not label your containers properly, it could get mixed up with somebody else's and be lost. Your whole semester's worth of work will be gone with it. So when you store your experiments in containers, label them carefully. Make sure to include your initials, the date, your lab section, and any other descriptive information you can give about the content. In many of our classes, we use the UV light to see tagged protein. Exposure to UV light can cause skin cancer. You can protect yourself by covering up exposed skin and wearing your safety glasses whenever using the UV light. Each machine has a UV shield that should be used when the light is turned on. As an option, we also have full face masks available for students, although they are not required. There are seven steps you want to take before you leave lab at the end of the day. First, disinfect your bench. Each lab has a disinfectant called Decon Conflict. Spray it on your bench top and let it sit there for three to five minutes. Then spray ethanol over the same area and use a paper towel to wipe off the disinfectant residue. Turn off all equipment and unplug everything but the laptop. Unplugging equipment reduces their potential as fire hazards. Empty your bench top biohazard bag if it's over half full. If it's less than half full, you may leave it there for the next person to come in and use. Take off your lab coat and store it in your designated drawer, or if it's contaminated or torn, you may dispose of it and get a new one for your next lab. Remove your gloves, dispose of them in the biohazard bins, and thoroughly wash your hands before leaving the lab. If there is an emergency during one of our labs, stay calm and make your way to the nearest exit. There are two evacuation exits on this floor, one at each end of the hallway. There is one stairwell next to the autoclave room which leads out to the back of the building. Consider this the secondary exit. If you are able, we prefer that you use the front stairwell by the elevators and restrooms. We will use the front exit for meeting purposes. If a fire alarm sounds, stop your work and remove your PPE. Leave your gloves and lab coat at your station. Exit the building using one of two evacuation routes and meet in front of Jordan Hall. Try to find your instructor or TA so that they can take role and ensure that everyone made it out of the building safely. If you are concerned about your physical ability to leave the building during an emergency, please come see me and we will discuss a personal safety plan for you. If you have any questions about your safety in the lab, please come see me in my office in room 6119 or ask your TA or instructor and we will make sure to get your questions answered. Thanks for watching and from all of us here at VIT, we hope you have a fun and safe semester.